If the Philippines ends up in a war with China, would Israel step in to help? But since Israel is currently focused on conflicts in the Middle East, how could it provide assistance to the Philippines? What type of support could Israel offer? And would it involve direct military confrontation against China? Previously, I discussed the unique bond between Israel and the Philippines. It's well known that the Philippines is Israel's sole ally in Southeast Asia. The Philippines voted in favor of UN Resolution 181, recommending the establishment of a Jewish state in 1947. The Philippines was among the 33 countries who supported the establishment of Israel and the only Asian country who voted for the resolution. That's why Filipinos are the only Asians who are not required to get visas to enter Israel. This is said to be payment for Israel's debt of gratitude to the Philippines. During the time of President Manuel Quezon, the Philippines was the only country in Asia that welcomed Jews. That's not the case for Malaysia and Indonesia, because the dominant religion is Islam. So naturally, they ally with Arab countries. Israel and Malaysia maintain no formal diplomatic relations. Malaysia maintains a hostile position towards Israel, but commercial relations between the two countries do exist, albeit very limited. Malaysian passports bear the inscription, this passport is valid for all countries except Israel. Israeli passport holders are forbidden to enter Malaysia without written permission from the Malaysian Ministry of Home Affairs. The recognition of Israel is a politically delicate issue for the Malaysian government. In December 2015, the Malaysian government refused to issue visas to two Israeli windsurfers and their coach to compete at the Youth Sailing World Championships, citing its policy of not having diplomatic relations with Israel. And the same goes for Indonesia. The governments of Malaysia and Indonesia have formally implemented boycotts of Western product. Big name Western brands from Unilever to Starbucks are being hit by a consumer boycott as a part of the fallout over the conflict in the Middle East. Unilever, whose well-known products include Ben and Jerry's ice cream, are among the companies saying their businesses are suffering. Malaysia has also imposed a ban on any ship that are heading to Israel from loading cargo at Malaysian ports. Malaysia's government imposed a ban on all Israeli-owned and flagships, as well as any vessels headed to Israel from docking at its ports. The remaining Southeast Asian countries are neutral. They don't want to interfere in any confrontations between the Philippines, China, and America. Israel has a tough choice to make between China and the Philippines. On one hand, they are thankful to the Philippines for sheltering many Jewish refugees, but they also want to keep their friendship with China strong and not cause any problems. China has become a significant trading partner for Israel, ranking third globally and holding the top position in East Asia. By 2022, China had become Israel's primary source of imports with goods valued at $12 billion. Also, the Chinese investment in Israel startups has surged, particularly in sectors like medical web cybersecurity, reaching a record $20 billion in 2022. Is Israel willing to jeopardize its economic relationship with China for the sake of supporting the Philippines? Before we discuss how Israel could help the Philippines if there is a war, over the South China Sea, let's first understand what the dispute is all about, what's happening there now, and why a war might break out in the first place. Territorial disputes in the South China Sea involve conflicting islands and maritime claims in the region by several sovereign states, namely China, Taiwan, Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. The disputes involve the islands, reefs, banks, and other features of the South China Sea, including the Sparta Islands, Arisal Islands, Skarbara Shoal, and various boundaries in the Gulf of Tonkin. The waters near the Indonesian Natuna Islands, which some regard as geographically part of the South China Sea, are disputed as well. In 2013, China started building islands in the Spartli and Parasol Islands area 
Vietnam and the Philippines had been doing small-scale island building for decades, but China joined later and did it on a much larger scale. From 2014 to 2016, China created more than new islands than all other nations in history combined. By 2016, China had even placed military equipment on one of its man-made islands, which was different from what other claimants did. China's claims in the South China Sea are marked by a line with nine dashes, known as the Nine Dash Line. In the late 1970s, the Philippines and Malaysia started claiming the Spartly Islands as part of their own territory. On June 11, 1978, President Ferdinand Marcos of the Philippines issued Presidential Decree No. 1596 declaring the northwestern part of the Spartly Islands called the Kalayan Island Group as Philippine territory. Between the 1990s and 2000s, who controls most of the Spartly and Paracel Islands has not changed much. China has full control of the Paracels. In the Spartlies, Vietnam has control over most. With 29 features, the Philippines controls 8, Malaysia has 5, and China has control over 5 as well. But since 2011, tensions have been rising again in the area. In February, a Chinese frigate fired shots at Philippine fishing boats. In May, a clash occurred between a Vietnamese oil and gas survey ship and three Chinese patrol vessels. The South China Sea arbitration was a case where the Philippines took China to court under the Ang Clause. It was about issues in the South China Sea, including China's Nine Dash Line. In 2016, the court ruled mostly in favor of the Philippines. It said it would not decide on sovereignty or boundaries, but clarified that China's historic rights claims within the Nine Dash Line have no legal standing, unless allowed under UNCLOS. China and Taiwan rejected the ruling. The Philippines argued that China's Nine Dash Line is invalid because it goes against UNCLOS rules on exclusive economic zones and territorial seas. They say that since many features in the South China Sea, like most of the Spiral Islands, can't support life, they can't have their own continental shelf, as defined in the convention. Recently, Chinese and Philippine Coast Guard vessels collided in the disputed South China Sea, and four Filipino crew members were injured in high seas confrontation. The Chinese Coast Guard ships and accompanying vessels blocked the Philippine Coast Guard and supply vessels off the disputed Second Thomas Shaw and executed dangerous maneuvers that caused two minor collisions between the Chinese ships and two of the Philippine vessels. Officials in China gave fewer details, but the country's Coast Guard said that the Philippine ships were illegally intruding the area's waters and accused one of them of ramming a Chinese vessel. Philippine officials said that the Philippine Coast Guard had minor structural damage from a collision that happened shortly after dawn. Over an hour later, another Chinese Coast Guard ship first blocked, then collided with a supply boat the Philippine Coast Guard was escorting. The supply boat, manned by Filipino Navy personnel, was later hit by water cannon blasts from two Chinese Coast Guard ships. Its windshield shattered, injuring at least four Filipino crew members. The confrontations have sparked fears of a larger conflict that could involve the United States and its allies. The US has warned it is obligated to defend the Philippines if Filipino forces, ships, and aircraft come under an armed attack, including in the South China Sea. If a war erupts involving the Philippines, America, and China, would Israel aid the Philippines? Does Israel have the military capacity to defeat China? Let's compare the military capabilities of China and Israel to see if Israel could win a war against China on its own. In terms of air power, China possesses over a thousand third generation fighters, equivalent to the combined number of such aircraft in all European countries. Additionally, China has its own fourth generation fighter, the J-20. In comparison, Israel has more than 200 third generation fighters and 25 F-35s. Both countries have nuclear weapons. In terms of military strength, China ranks as the second most powerful army globally after America, boasting a vast number of well-equipped soldiers and sophisticated weaponry. 
with a population approximately 2 billion. China holds the largest population globally. Israel's military, on the other hand, falls between the 20th and 26th position among the top 20 armies worldwide. Despite having a smaller population as a country, Israel maintains a highly efficient and well-equipped military force, albeit with fewer personnel. With that said, Israel alone does not stand a chance of winning a war against China, but with its biggest ally, America, China can be defeated. Given that Israel is unable to directly engage in a military conflict with China, there are other ways they could potentially assist the Philippines. These might include providing diplomatic support, intelligence sharing, supplying military equipment and technology. Israel has been helping the Philippines by modernizing its armed forces. Let's look at a possible scenario of how war will erupt between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea. In 2027, China pushes to expand its territorial claims to include Second Thomas Shaw, part of the Spiral Islands and only 195 miles from the Philippines. Chinese Marines attempt to intimidate Philippine Marine Corps troops stationed on the beach landing ship Sierra Madre by staging a live fire exercise nearby. But the exercise is mistaken for an assault. Philippine Marines return fire causing casualties and Philippine warplanes damage a Chinese type 071 amphibious landing dock. As both sides trade blows, the conflict expands to the Chinese aircraft carrier Shandong conducting airstrikes on Philippine airfields and Chinese cruise missiles striking military bases across the archipelago. America invokes the mutual defense treaty with the Philippines, sends its naval forces backed up by two carrier strike groups and B-1 bombers based in Guam to seize Chinese-held Subi Reef. US and Chinese air and naval forces become directly engaged. The two powers are embroiled in an open-ended conflict that no one wanted and no one knows how to stop. Countries allied with the United States, like Japan, Australia, South Korea, and Israel, would join in, and nations supporting China would also be drawn into the conflict. At this stage, the tension goes beyond just the South China Sea. Do you believe Israel would support the Philippines in a time of need? In other words, is Israel willing to sacrifice for the Philippines in a conflict with China?